Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera. And today, we're gonna to be learning how to do a lower service on a box fork. task you will need fork that needs servicing, rubber mallet, jock pump, socket wrench, correct sockets for your fork, which in this case is a 10 millimeter and a 15 millimeter, a syringe that shows cubic centimeters, two millimeter Allen key, hokey thing, we're still not sure what these are called, lower service, do hickey things, or just a socket wrench, brake cleaner, paper towels, pliers, flathead screwdriver, box 20 weight gold fluid, box five weight suspension fluid, box dust wiper kit in the correct size for your fork. Some slick honey, not to be confused with actual honey, oil pan, and another small plastic container, PVC pipe, valve core remover, and a vise or a bike stand to hold your fork. This fork belongs to our friend Susie. It is a Fox Float 34. It's been on her bike since 2015 and has not been serviced once. <laughs> we wanted to do this on Susie's fork because our forks are all in pretty good condition right now and don't need a lower service. And also it's definitely harder on a fork that hasn't been serviced regularly. Let's start at the top and name the parts of the fork. Crown? No, this is the crown. Okay. This is the crown. That's the crown. I don't know what this thing's called. Is this the steer tube or is that only when it's in the bike? That's the steer tube. Steer tube crown widgets that change what's going on. This is your air capsule. So you put your shock pump there. This is seems to be a lockout. We got our rebound down here, which she did mention some issues with the rebound. These are the lowers. Okay. And these are the uppers. Or stanchions. <laughs> stanchions, I knew that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put it in the vise. We're gonna use a rag, obviously. Our vise has a pipe clamp on one side. So we're gonna take advantage of that. I'm kind of scared of this task, I'm not gonna lie. Suspension's kind of scary. Okay, so a lower service basically is just changing the oil in your fork, right? So, I mean, it's like any moving part on any mechanical thing is you want it to be well lubricated. Moving on. <laughs> what else are we going to change besides just the oil? Probably the seals. Okay. And the, so I guess the seals are just these bits around here that do they do anything other than just like they keep dirt from getting into the oil? And keep oil from getting out. And then there's one other part that we replaced. The O-rings. Yes. I have no idea what those do. When the oil gets up to them, it stays in them. And so the, they, the, the fork stays lubed. Because otherwise, if your bike is sitting upright, all the oil just drops down to the bottom. And then the stanchions aren't actually lubricated. Any thoughts on what your first step should be? I feel like this the first step is hard and involves loosening this extremely tight bolt at the bottom. No, that might be like the third or fourth step. Shoot. Take the air out. <laughs> yes. Why is that important? Uh, because otherwise it'll explode dramatically. Yes, otherwise the <laughs> lowers want to shoot off at you. Generally. Ooh, it stinks. What they recommend is to check the pressure beforehand so you can set it back to that same pressure. That is no longer an option, so we will do it based on the- We'll ask Susie. We'll yeah, that was step one. Step three is the bolt. What is step two? How are you going to get the other bolt off? Talking oh, I need to take this cap off somehow with the teeny weeny. We need a wee Allen key. Uh, the other thing before you do this, count the number of clicks that her rebound has. So now you are going to loosen the lock nuts. So there's one there and one there. So this process is basically the same for most Fox forks, right? It's and just... really most forks in general. So you just need to figure out which size sockets you need. Once you've loosened it, you don't want to do it all yeah, the way the loose because you don't want the oil to come out. So loosen the other one now. That's too big. Not the right size. Not the right size. Okay, it's not a 13 then, not a 14. All right, now we're in business. Okay, that loosened really easily. Now you can go ahead and unscrew them by hand now. Isn't the oil gonna come out? No, because that's what we have to do is actually break the, there's kind of a seal there. That's the hard part. That's the part that you want to be careful with. Oh, we did it. Look on there, there's a crush washer. Go ahead and pull that guy off. Oh, man. Getting things off of things is like the hardest part of bike maintenance. It's not the concepts. I feel like I'm like, 80% on the concepts and like just when it comes to like like oh just take this washer off bro <laughs> uh you want a pair of pliers yeah i think just being 
raised as a woman, socialized female, you don't think to use tools. Okay, that's not working either. Maybe grab those red ones. I'll just bring all of them in case. Got these ones, these ones. Those are not gonna be helpful. Those are not pliers. <laughs> Come on, little dumb washer. Good job, pliers. Okay, hot tip for bike maintenance is keep all your things in a spot where you can find them again. <laughs> Because we, not only do we have to take this apart, we have to put it back together again. How many clicks was it? What? The rebound. Eight from open. All right, you should write it down. Nah. I'm not gonna forget that, it's one number. Okay, now what? These guys need to go into the fork because right now, if you push on them, they don't go anywhere, which is good because otherwise oil would be leaking out. How are we gonna do that? I think this is where the doohickeys come in handy. This is the part that scares me. I do not like tasks where you just bang on things. So not everybody has these tools. We happen to. Um, Thanks, Fox. Why don't you show how they, they go are. on there? Okay, well you just screw them on. And you don't want it all the way because there has to be space yeah, yeah, for you to I knock it through. That. So that's the amount of gap you want. And then you're just gonna hit it with a rubber mallet. But what I wanna talk about is you can do it with sockets. What you do is you take the nut, the lock nut that was on there. So screw it part way on. So on these one, you don't actually need the socket because you can just hit on that nut. So what's the issue here? Oh, this thing sticks out. Yeah, you don't want to be hitting your rebound knob. Yeah, no so kidding. what you do is you screw it down part way. You stick the big socket that you used on it and then you hit the socket instead and that protects that rebound knob. But this also protects the rebound knob. This also knob. protects. Okay, so we're gonna do this the professional way. We think maybe one day though, we'll do a video where we just do everything with the wrong tools. Well, because we used to get a lot of crap for like installing forks with a hammer, but you know what? We never once broke a bicycle. So I think it's a valuable skill to be able to do, even though it is nice to have things like crown fork race installers and these things. <clears throat> you want a decent gap there, that looks good. Gap there, that looks good. Okay, put the oil pan here, and then I'm gonna turn the fork around and then I'm gonna whack it like that. Rubber mallet. I'm feeling kind of nervous about this. It's just like it's not our fork and I have to hit it with a mallet. This is why this flooring is the best. Which side do I start with? Doesn't, Doesn't matter. matter. Just see if the gap is gone. I did not like this. Part of it is that the whole fork is compressing because it's a fork. So try holding the lowers down while you hit up. There you go. I'm not hurting it. Not hurting it. 100% sure. 100%. Even though this is like a little on the wiggly side. Yep. All right, now check, that sounded better. Oh yeah, cool. Where's the oil? Unscrew it some more now and then push it up again. You should be able to push it up manually now. Oh, here she comes, here she comes. Oh, it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, that really looks decent. So go ahead and unscrew it all the way. Push the part that was inside there. Yeah, push that up. Good, so now that's out of the way. So you can let go of that side. Okay, cool. There's the oil. All right, now you want to do the same thing on the other side. All right, I'm feeling nearly inspired. Now I pull off the lowers, correct? Yep. And you just want to make sure you're pulling straight down. There you go. So now keep pulling straight down yep. till you clear both. All right. Let's uh, transition up onto the table. How's it look in there? It's fairly dirty. You want to pull the O-rings out. Yeah, those are looking pretty dirty. And then these are the seals. Those are the seals. Also look pretty dirty. Yeah, but we're replacing them, so don't worry about cleaning well, them. You're gonna just hook underneath it and pry up. Ooh. I guess it doesn't matter if I wreck them because they're coming out. Correct. That's why we're using a screwdriver. Yep. Might do better with just my fingers. Nope. I'm probably just not feeling comfortable using the requisite amount of force. So you wanna be basically touching the side of the fork underneath the seal, and then you just hold the very end of the screwdriver and just push hard on it. <laughs> okay, now we have to do that again on the other side. Hip, hip, hooray. Oh, that's gonna not gonna end well. Oh yeah, this is much better. <laughs> <laughs> it shot and landed like way over there. I feel like that's probably not how like the Fox race mechanics do this. 
I just like things to be clean. I feel like that's good advice for like bike maintenance is to just like clean things and see if they still don't work. Kind of like, you know, have like somebody drowns in cold water. You're not really dead until you're warm and dead. It's not really broken <laughs> until you're clean until and broken. broken. We need a blue towel sponsor. That's shiny, that's nice. Now we put in our new thingies. Dust wipers, apparently. Do you know what the dust wipers are? The O-rings, the seals. I don't know why we've been calling them seals. Well, because they also are seals. Yeah, exactly. Because it's more fun when you get to say that every time. Obviously, you want to make sure you got the right size seals for your fork. These say 34, and we have a 34 millimeter fork, so that's great news. Whoa. Almost, Almost lost a toe. Seals slash dust wipers, O-rings. No idea where these go. So these are the yeah. crush washers. This goes on the bigger side, that goes okay, on the so smaller side. Okay, so they just gave us new ones of those. Because if you look at this one, you yeah, see how it's, it's like crushed. totally flattened? See how the other one's still stuck on there? Be careful of your fingers. This is the top. Correct. We don't have the actual tool to put those in. Oh, good. Grab the uh, that piece of PVC over there. We'll see if it happens to be the right size. <laughs> oh, it does. So you just want to make sure it's straight. The seal is straight. And then I'd probably just use the rubber mallet and give it a couple of good whacks. So you can see here it's flush and there it's not, but we're close. Boom. Uh, not quite in the back. People who don't have a piece of PVC that's just the right size, you are not doomed. Just like use something, like not a flathead screwdriver because that's too pokey. Like that would punch through the seal. But like put it in like Sid is doing as much as you can and then like carefully tap around the edges using a hammer. I think so, you wanna try? Looks flush to me. What I've found works really well is to soak them in oil first. We have our cottage cheese container. We're gonna soak it in some high performance fork bath fluid. I think it's right. a bubble bath. You have the, uh, the foam O-rings, there's bubble bath. This is not strictly necessary, but it's nice to start the O-rings off with, the, with some nice oil on them. Do you remember when they first came out with the 28 gold? Yeah, it was a big deal. But you sent me to the bike shop to get some for you because you were doing it okay. and the guy wouldn't sell it to me. He's like, I don't think you need that. I like pretty sure your fork doesn't have it. And I was like, we have the new 36. He's like, no, honey, you don't. And I just had to come back and be like, I couldn't buy it. They wouldn't sell it to me. <laughs> Why, if you're a woman, you should learn how to do your own bike maintenance. Feminist rant over. Okay, just stick it in there. Wow, that's really satisfying for some reason. You can go ahead and pull that O-ring because we have a replacement one. So the other thing is wipe those down. Go ahead and pull on that one. That's the air shaft. Pulling. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead and pull on the other one. It'll probably come down and, and then wipe it all the way down. Put it so that it's slightly up. So here's a tip that I learned from one of the Fox guys once. Put a little bit of air into the air side and that will push that piston out, which will make it easier to get on. This way or this way? I can't remember which way. Good question. Hold on. You should be able to figure this out. This way is the front. Do you want to lubricate the seals and just rub around some slick honey on the inside there of the seals? Yep. Oh, geez. Yeah. And that's the annoying part is when you get one on, the other one wants to pop off. It's all right. It's okay. Oh yeah, that moves nicely. Good, so that one came out. This one did not come out yet. There she is. So now you wanna pull it out a little bit so that there's space. Good. Now you're gonna put your oil bath in and it's 30 cc's of gold on either side. Wow, it looks like maple syrup. You could totally confuse this for maple syrup. <laughs> Wait, where's the 30 cc line? 10, 20, 30, oh, 30's a lot. Do 30 cc's. So this is the list of the oil volumes for a 2015. Um, I'll put a link to the Fox website here where you can find all of these if you are doing this yourself. Should I pull this forward a little bit? Yeah. There you go. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Just squeeze it all in. Squeeze it all in. There she goes. Gross, excuse you. All right, so the reason I had you put the fork like that was so that it didn't drip out as you were putting it back in. 
So now you can push the lowers all the way down. Okay. And then just make sure those oh, things pop it. through. And if you need to, you can use like a, oh, you got it through, nice. Okay, crush washer. You just screw them on. It'll pull them through as you tighten them. So once it tops out, then you want to do like maybe an eighth or a quarter of a turn. Good. And that's the crush washer crushing. They actually aren't that tight. Is that something you can mess up if you do it too tight? Yes. Yeah, so pull it off again so we can see. So there's a little notch on the rebound like part that yeah, sticks this out. It's gonna like tighten into that. Yeah, and then the screw lines up with that notch. Now what you'll do is you'll tighten it some, and then as you get kind of tight, now start wiggling it back and forth and see if it kind of falls into the notch. Do we put air in and then do rebound or do rebound? Doesn't matter. Whenever? Five, six, seven, eight. It also says that there should be 15 cc's of float fluid in the top Good. of the air thing. Float fluid is this guy? So let all the air out okay. and then use a valve core remover to remove that valve. I would probably turn this upside down and compress the fork. So if there's any oil in there, we get all the oil out. Okay, there was no oil in there. Good thing we're gonna add some oil. I checked, it is in fact 15 cc's. So you're holding the fork down and then you're gonna let go of the fork as you press down on that. And then let go, yeah. Oh wow, it's sucking it down. Yeah. Valve core back in. Test it, go ahead and put it on the ground and just compress it a couple times. Oh, it feels like butter. Yeah, At this no. point, all we need to do is put the air back in, set all the settings back as you like it. Then you are good to go. Here's how to do a lower service on a Fox fork in one minute. Place the fork in a vise or bike stand. Check the air pressure in any rebound or compression settings and write them down. Then remove all the air. Remove the rebound adjustment knob. Then using the correct size sockets for your fork, remove the lower leg nuts and crush washers. Place an oil pan under the fork and attach the lower leg removal tools, leaving a one centimeter gap between the bottom of the lowers. Using a rubber mallet, firmly hammer the removal tools while holding the lowers until the pistons retract and oil starts to escape. Remove the lower leg removal tools and carefully slide the lowers straight off the uppers. Carefully remove the O-rings. Use a flathead screwdriver to pry the old dust wipers out, being careful not to scratch the inside of the fork. Clean the lowers, then install the new dust wipers using a rubber mallet and a piece of PVC. Soak the new foam O-rings in 20 weight gold fluid and install. Add some air into the air chamber to extend the piston. Replace the sag indicator O-ring and reinstall the lowers. Inject the correct amount of 20 weight gold fluid inside each leg. Make sure to refer to the Fox website for the correct volume for your fork. Install the crush washers and lock nuts and tighten. Reinstall the rebound adjustment knob. Remove the air again and then the valve core. Flip the fork over and compress to eject any remaining oil. Inject five weight suspension fluid into the air chamber, referring to the Fox website for the correct volume. Reinstall the valve core and check for smooth movement of the fork. Pump up the fork and reset the rebound and compression to their original settings.